Welcome to Topic Discuss, where you give me a topic and then we'll discuss it. This is also an opportunity for you to relax, to chill, and to just have fun and listen. We have a very eclectic range of topics on this channel and podcast. So um, please enjoy yourself. Please relax and just enjoy what we're going to talk about, which today will be Tinky Winky. Welcome to Topic Discuss, where you give me a topic and then we discuss it. I'm going to start this episode by telling you a story. Um, when I was in college many years ago, I spent a summer or about a month, I should say, in the British Isles. While I was there, my friends and I traveled across England. I think we even went to Paris. Um, so we also went, went to um to France, but we mostly were in England and Wales and, and Ireland and and Scotland too. And I can remember uh, going to a beach in Scotland where um, there was this kind of this boat that would take us on tours to see um, jumping dolphins. And this this specific dolphin that they um, that they had named and wanted us to see or you could pay to go see so we paid to go on this boat trip to to watch this dolphin and i can distinctly remember a family there with a kid who had a giant teletubby doll uh it was red with an antenna and a circle at the top of the antenna and it was um this teletubby's name was poe and i hadn't really heard much about teletubbies my friends kind of made fun of it. I do have even other friends who kind of have conspiracy theories about Teletubbies. But that little kid accidentally dropped Poe overboard. So <clears throat> Poe falls overboard. And this was a giant stuffed doll. And these people started screaming for help for Poe. And everybody on the boat started chanting, save Poe, save Poe, save Poe. So we, the, the captain turned that ship around and um, <clears throat> they caught a big hook, finally hooked uh, the, the ring for, uh, on top of Poe's head and brought Poe up and we saved Poe. So you'll understand that this episode of Topic Discuss is about the Teletubbies. Where it actually came from is a viewer asked me if I'm a Tinky Winky ally. Because in previous uh, episodes, I have mentioned I'm an ally for uh, the queer community and, and um, for women. And, um, but I didn't know what they meant by Tinky Winky ally. So for that viewer, we are going to do a deep dive into Teletubbies. So make sure that you're relaxed, you sit back, you wrap up in your favorite blanket, get your favorite snacks, because this is your time. This is your time to relax. This is your time to not think about anything. You don't need to do anything except enjoy an episode of Topic Discuss. Wait, there is one thing you need to do. I forget to, to ask please subscribe and also watch all the way through. It helps the algorithms and then like, and I also love comments, especially controversial comments, as long as they don't get screened out by community guidelines. So let's talk about Teletubbies and um, uh, 
kind of historically where this started from. So in the 90s um, in England, um, <clears throat> there was a, uh, a woman by the name of Anne Wood, <clears throat> and she was the creative director and producer for Teletubby, Teletubbies. She had had a previous um, uh, life and experience in education. She had been trained as, an, as a kid's at children's educator, and she had had some experience with other shows that she had produced that were kind of like Mupp Muppets or puppets that were kind of hand puppets for children and for kids. Um, but they were for an older age group, maybe, maybe five and above. And she really wanted to focus a, a, a television show for kids that were toddlers, like two, three, or even an 18 month old. And, um, and she had some science and, and academic background to kind of guide her, even though in, uh, in the United Kingdom at this time, it was quite controversial to or I don't know if it was controversial or just highly debated whether little children should, like toddlers should be learning anything, <laughs> number one. Like don't teach them they're only 18 months old or two years old or three years old. Just let them play and be kids. So there was that debate, but there's there was also a big concern about television and can children learn from television? Should we have them in front of televisions? So Sesame Street, um, as many of you in America know, and the children's uh, the children's broadcast net network really was kind of a first attempt to use television as an education platform and an education tool. Um, but when you look at Sesame Street and what it focused on, it was it really was focused on you know a neighborhood. Um, and which is great, right? There's nothing wrong with what Sesame Street did. In fact, they they launched a you know a huge legacy in in educating kids. I grew up with Sesame Street. I also grew up with Romper Room um, and um, things like um, uh, Three's or let's see, Electric Company, the Electric Company, which we'll maybe do an episode on that later and various shows like that. Mr. Rogers was my favorite. <clears throat> but um, Teletubbies, Ann Ward wanted to take, or Ann Wood wanted to take a very different approach um, to, to um, children's education. First of all, to create a show that is geared to toddlers, which was kind of new at the time, and to create a show that was modern and, and really embraced the idea of television and technology. She recognized that children at this time, you know, this was 97 going into the year to the 21st century, right? She recognized that technology was the future and that our children are surrounded by technology. And it's interesting because as a father and as a parent, you know, I've always wondered about technology and my friends with, who are parents and their kids we worry about too much device time. The, but what she did is she really just owned this reality. She owned the fact that our kids are surrounded by technology. So let's leverage it in her mind, what she was thinking. Let's leverage it and really make a show that will um, reach toddlers and then make the content toddler friendly. So for her, toddler friendly meant things like just the beginnings of language, so kind of baby talk, um, as well as repetition. She recognized, and this is scientifically accurate, that human beings and our brains require repetition. We're pattern recognizing machines. And so she, rec she knew that that needed to be part of the content of Teletubbies. So really, I, I'm giving you this background because I want you to understand that Anne Wood was ahead of her time. And despite all the kind of controversial and silly, silly things about Teletubbies, people will say, she was really quite brilliant in what she was trying to accomplish. So she pitches this idea, I think, to the BBC. 
and they think it's a great idea. She had already had some success. So she purchased a farm or the BBC purchased a farm um, in Worcestershire, Worcestershire um, County in England, which is like this hamlet. Um, uh, 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 a hamlet's like a, a tiny village that's in England, I think they're called hamlets if they don't have a church at the center, but have some kind of an agricultural center like farms. So they purchased this farm and then they literally transformed this farm into an outdoor set. And the concept was, this was a technologically advanced uh, show where, but for toddlers. So she wanted it to be nature oriented outside but there was a dome that housed the Teletubbies as if they were these aliens or these, these creatures that had, had established a, a television world, right? And um, so there's this windmill and the windmill is intended to be the um, broadcasting station to, to send signals out. And the signals are caught by antenna like you would see on a television set. It doesn't work that way so much anymore, but back then made sense. So this windmill spins and sends out a tel television signal is the concept. And then these little alien toddlers, these toddler tub tubbies are, have an antenna on top of their head. Every one of them have an antenna and the antenna uh, you know, picks up the signal from the windmill and then on their bellies, there's a television set and the television set shows what the windmill is broadcasting. That's it, that's the concept. And it's brilliant and I love it. Like when you really, if you go back and watch Teletubbies now, you could, you could really uh, you know, understand this concept and it, it actually isn't weird. It's quite endearing and it's really smart, especially for two and three year olds. And here's why I say it's so brilliant because I have had five kids. And so I've experienced five little ones that have gone through that toddler stage. And I guarantee you, they love YouTube and YouTube kids, especially because what they can do with YouTube, which you couldn't do with television in the past is you can watch it over and over and over again. Right. And that's what I would see our toddlers do. And the reason that they're watching it over and over is because our brains are wired we have evolved to recognize pattern. It's enriching to us to recognize pattern and then learn it over and over. So what these Teletubbies would do is the windmill would spin, um, sending out this, this signal, um, a, a radio signal or television signal. One of the Teletubbies would pick it up you know, with their antenna. It would show on their belly like YouTube. I'm gonna liken, I'm gonna say Teletubbies were the forefront to YouTube. So there's this, little belly the a video then plays and that's what the toddlers then can see it kind of zooms in on that belly and becomes the whole screen and then they watch a two to five minute clip of kids like playing with ducks or um just really simple toddler type um clips uh, of flowers or of dogs puppies and then they would complete the the um, little uh, the little uh, film on or little video on the tummy of the Teletubby, and then the four of them would jump up and down and say again, 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 and they'd zoom right back in and show that same clip. So again, repetition. I mean, Teletubbies is no different to me than YouTube Kids. It's just this concept um, to an adult looks kind of interesting, creepy scary, who knows what, but I wanted this audience and my viewer who asked me if I'm a Tinky Winky ally, um, how, you know, that Teletubbies was actually really brilliant. So it, it became really popular in England and um, the characters that were developed, and I, I'm just gonna look at my notes. So Poe is one of the Teletubbies. Poe is the one we rescued in the ocean, uh, in, in the Arctic Ocean. <laughs> Uh, so remember, Poe is red, and about um, it, and um, she has uh, an antenna with a circle on the top, and um, 
the actress who plays Po, her name is uh, Piai Fan Li, and she speaks Cantonese. So if you listen to that character kind of talk baby talk, it's got a little, she purposely put in a Cantonese accent. Um, and so that's the red one with the circle antenna. That is um, Po. Uh, La La is the yellow one with a squiggly, I think it's a squiggly antenna. And La La was played by actress Nikki Smedley. And then Dipsy uh, was green with just one straight antenna, nothing on the top of it. Uh, just a single antenna played by an African, um, British African, John Simmet. And they purposely actually made Dipsy's face darker than the other Teletubbies to make sure that kids were identifying him as, as brown or, or black. And then we come to Tinky Winky. That is who we want to talk about on this episode. And I'm excited and sad to talk about Tinky Winky because Simon Shelton, um, who played Tinky Winky, was an incredible actor, had uh, beautiful kids. Um, he, the, his costume was purple. So Tinky Winky's purple with this upside down triangle. And those, those things on the top of their heads are all simply just antenna. Um, and so that actor, Simon Shelton, unfortunately he died in 2018. So for the viewer who, who asked me if I'm a Tinky Winky ally, my heart goes out to the actor who played Tinky Winky um, and, uh, and to his family uh, because he is gone. So we lost Tinky Winky, um, actually. So let's talk a little bit more about these characters. They would wear these costumes. And remember, this is all filmed outside on these rolling green hills and then a pit where there is a dome built all outside for these characters to go inside. It's their house. And it's very techno technologically advanced. It's almost like they're from outer space. They're almost like robots themselves. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, they are um, toddlers. They're meant to be toddlers. Their arms are shorter than normal. So if you, again, I think about my own toddler kids, their arms and their legs are shorter than normal, right? They can't reach their hands over their head. I can go like this and reach over my head. My little toddlers could not even touch their their fingers by putting their uh, arms over their heads because humans have such big brains, huge brains. And so they designed these creatures to look like toddlers with this belly that's, that's tubby. That's why they call them tubbies, Teletubbies. I could be a Teletubby because my tubby is my tummy is tubby, but I don't have short arms or short legs, so I can't quite pull it off. But these costumes were so unique that um, Tinky Winky's costume, or, or Simon, um, who played Tinky Winky, had to get into a costume that made him eight feet tall. Poe, who was the shortest of the characters, was six and a half feet tall. So these, these actors would walk around in these suits, in these costumes, and, um, you know, film and I can't imagine how hot it must have been for them. Um, I'd love to meet them, interview them and understand um, what it was like to be in those suits. So they had these bunnies that they wanted to have on the set as well, live bunnies. But because the characters were so unusually huge, which, which they didn't want them to visually look huge, right? Eight feet tall is huge. Sasquatch, huge. And they didn't want to film about Sasquatch. They wanted a toddler show, right? So they um, <clears throat> they made sure they got those giant bunnies, and I forgot what they're called, but they're huge so that they, they didn't look so small in front of the Teletubbies. So those are giant bunnies too when you're watching the Teletubbies. So again, these are toddlers. And when they first came forward or uh, into the British... Um, kind of the BBC Children's Network. Uh, there was a lot of criticism from parents because they thought that these Teletubbies should be speaking like clearly because they didn't want to teach kids baby talk. But the intention was not to, to teach them to talk. These were for toddlers. They made this film for toddlers. If you can just think about your own 18 month old or your own two year old and then go watch Teletubbies, you'll get it. 
and it's not weird, it's not scary, it's not stupid, it's not dumbed down, it's actually exactly what our toddlers do with YouTube kids today. So I'm kind of defending Teletubbies and Ann Wood and her brilliance, as well as these actors, um, and I wanna pay homage to them or honor them. Um, so that, that leads us to America, the, the land of liberty and, um, and fundamentalist Christianity as well. So America's concern was not so much about, you know, dumbing down a television show for kids, which is what the British moms were worried about. And I, I just want to pause and say something. I do have a great deal of respect for moms. I also find it interesting how moms or, or I shouldn't say moms because that, that's a huge stereotype, but for some reason, people will rally around the wrong thing without critically thinking, without really understanding what's going on, without really learning what is this show for. So like mothers were protesting against Teletubbies, like they were creating these protest circles, which remind me of mothers who were protesting masks during the pandemic, right? It It's insane because people are being, I call it laziness because they're not taking time to really critically think. They suspend their critically th critical thinking and then jump to a conclusion. So in America, Teletubbies shows up and Teletubbies was wildly popular in America. Um, and then one day, Tinky Winky, uh, our purple friend with a triangle on top of his head, shows up on, the, uh, uh, on an episode with a purse. Now, this is a magic bag. Um, this is a toddler. And, but to the Christian fundamentalists, it was a purse. And so Jerry Falwell, and you can click here to watch my episode about Jerry Falwell, but Jerry Falwell, my good friend, senior, um, jumped into the scene to to um, to claim that Tinky Winky's a homosexual, and we can't we can't talk about homosexuals to the kids to the childrens, right? So um, there was a huge fear. This kind of reminds me of the big fear around Frozen, right? And um, you know the lesbians. <clears throat> so. What I don't understand, again, about the human nature, and I'd love for comments below, is what, what, how weird are we as adults to superimpose our sick thinking onto toddlers, okay? Because Tinky Winky is a toddler. They never intended Tinky Winky to be gay. They don't think, they, they, there was nothing sexual about these characters. Tinky Winky's a toddler, an 18-month-old, a two-year-old, three-year-old. And the thing on top of his head is not sexual. All of you out there who think that the things on top of their heads were sexual, that's you. That is you. Thinking that way, right? And then imposing that onto the show. Anne Wood never intended any of that. Anne Wood made television sets into alien creatures that walked around like toddlers. They're television sets with a television on their tummy and an antenna on top of their head. But we as adults, strangely enough, superimpose our own sick thinking on top of these, you know, the, these innocent shows. Tinky Winky, if you ask Simon Shelton, Simon is not gay. It's okay if he was. God rest his soul, he's no longer with us. Um, but Tinky Winky was never intended to be gay or straight or anything but an alien uh, tubby television that is two years old. Good grief. But Jerry Falwell was sure, was sure that this was propaganda. The government is trying to get you to, to be okay with the homosexuals. We can't be okay with the homosexuals. That's what this was all about for Jerry Falwell, senior. You know, and that's, it's, it's mind blowing, right? Because at the end of the day, um, this is an innocent show that is actually very good for toddlers. Anne Wood used academic best practices for toddlers to create this show. Repetition, you know, um, and, and engagement and enrichment um, through technology. I wanna say this about technology. 
Human beings are the reason for technology. If you want to look at something that differentiates our species from any other species that has ever existed, it's complex technology. The human species has created um, complex technologies uh, that we see today. I mean, look at the room that I'm sitting in. It's a it's a theater room in a house that that you would not see any other species create anything like that. That is from the human innovative technological capability. Our brains, our brains have evolved um, to to uh, develop this this capability for creating complex technologies that have made us for better or for worse, the superior species ever. We can live everywhere. We can survive anything, including living on Mars if we so set our minds to it. We have our species living in outer space. That's because of technology. And I say all of that because our minds are geared to technology. We need to own the technology, embrace it, and make it better. Instead of being afraid of it, running from it, and telling our congregations to stay away from it. Jerry Falwell is telling his congregations never to watch Teletubby. Just go and read your Bible. I, no offense to the Bible lovers out there, but I'm telling you something right now that is not going to help a kid develop. Um, they need, we need to embrace technology and own the technology that's around us. Don't be afraid of it. Understand it. Own it. Don't run from it make it part of who you are in your life because we invented it. This, come, this is who we are as a species. I, I want to liken this to cats. Cats. Cats, even domestic cats. Cats are designed, they have evolved to be pure carnivores. So they are designed and they have evolved to hunt. They're not social animals in the way that you would see with a dog. That's why dogs are such different pets than cats. Some of my viewers love cats. Some of my viewers want to eliminate the cats they have in their house, Brittany. But cats are designed, they have evolved to hunt and only eat protein. They're carnivores. So what should we do for cats? We should give them the opportunity to hone their skills of hunting. So when I think about humans, what is it that's unique about us? What have we evolved into? We have evolved massive brains that need massive amounts of enrichment, massive amounts of um, learning and of repetition and of pattern building and of creation and creativity. So that's what we should be put, so it's okay. I'm just trying to make this okay and recognize this is who we are. We, we are the reason technology exists because it's part of how we've evolved. So we should embrace it just like a cat should embrace eating a bird. So am I a tinky winky ally? <clears throat> yes, I'm a tinky winky ally. And I'll kick anyone who messes around with tinky winky. I'm stronger than I look. But yes, I'm a Tinky Winky ally, um, and I'm a Teletubby ally. Um, you know, Tinky Winky, <laughs> um, I've had some viewers say that the triangle on top of his head is representative of the Illuminati or some big, you know, cabal. I mean, this stuff has to stop. And if you're one of my viewers, and if you get, you know, kind of... Uh, stuck in a rabbit hole down the forums um, or, or the chans, uh, release yourself and liberate yourself from um, superstition, liberate yourself from conspiracy theory, liberate yourself from fear um, and embrace who we are as a species. We are a technologically bound species because it's what we've evolved to become. It's natural. It's who we are. So thank you for um, spending some time on the Teletubbies, uh, learning about Tinky Winky. I do hope that you'll subscribe. I also have this very show on my podcast. You can see on any of your favorite podcast platforms, Apple, Google, um, Spotify, or whatever other platform you prefer for your podcast. 
if you prefer to listen. Um, I love you all. Ally for Tinky Winky. Peace out. One, two, three, four.